Hello, welcome to the Pitchy Podcast. We're your hosts, James. And Stephanie. Well, Stephanie, today is an extra special episode because, you know, we got some unfinished business to talk about season 24. We do. We never talked about what our favorite lives were. We couldn't fit it in. (laughs) When all of the production was gone and, you know, it was just the artists, the contestants, the bands, the BGVs. And the staging. So we're going to bring you our, mine and Stephanie's, top 10 live performances in a little bit of a different format. So stay tuned and we hope you enjoy it. Joy. It's coming on Christmas. They're cutting down trees. They're putting up rain and singing songs of joy and peace. Oh. I wish I had a river I could skate away on. With Lila's voice, is that Lila's voice is peace, okay? So Lila is telling this story and sharing this not in the moment of desperation and heartbreak, but on the after, where she's at a place of peace with what happened. Like, this is how I felt then, but I'm singing this in a present moment of being at peace with the situation. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. it's just so gorgeous and so beautiful. Um, It was the ultimate show closer. When he when he was kicking his leg, I said, "You better perform, <laughs> like you better send us." I was it, it, the he has this he has this swag, like he just yeah. is. He's everything, just God, like no way for the buck twenty five. Listen, wet. soaking wet. Said. But there is so much power. There is so much power in his vocal. There is so much. There's so much joy. He's everything. I just, just like Gwen said, he just seems like the most real, humble, down dude. And I am just, I was so happy for him because this performance was everything. The industry needs bias. Still don't understand how she is such an impactful communicator with those sunglasses on. It's crazy. Like, because it doesn't deter Can't see me. Lies. And, yeah, and stuff like that deters me all the time from being able to focus on somebody. It ends up being a distraction for me, but it is not with her. And I don't understand why. I don't know if it's the star quality. I don't know if, if it's the fact that her, I, well, I think it is the fact that her voice communicates everything and her app her presence on the stage communicates everything so it is, yeah it is so interesting i've never come across an, a, another artist like that This was probably the coolest and most impactful staging that I had seen. That was cool. It was hot. It was so perfect because the song is with a little help from my friends. And it was so cool to see not only the BGVs, but a couple of the guys playing guitar on the stage with him on these circles surrounding him. 
What also was really impactful and noticeable to me was that the BGVs, and this is the nature of the song, the BGVs were doing a lot of a lot of singing and a lot of singing on their own where Huntley was not singing, right? So they, they took up a lot of space in the song. The incredible thing was, is that it only made Huntley shine more. Yeah. Yeah. Like it all, like it did not take away from him at all. It only made him shine more. Cause when he opened up his mouth, there was complete holleration. We are not in the battles anymore. We are not in the knockouts anymore. But Mara had a knife in her back pocket. <laughs> she was ready. She was ready. She there was so much. Knife. Yeah. She had a sword. She, she had a sword. She, <laughs> there was so much passion in that performance. She never, pun intended, she never lost control. Mm -mm. Like for as much of movement and performance as she was giving, she never lost control. It was stunning. And then I was like, oh, it's going to be fire. Because I know who's singing this song. Yeah. <laughs> I know who's singing this song. She's going to murder. And then I got happy all over again. Her song choices this season have been second to none as far Bananas. as I'm Bananas. She just sang it down. I was just looking at her like, sing, man. Like, yes, 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 yes. I had the rock sign up the entire performance. I barely wrote notes. I had the rock I, sign I up the too. entire performance. I was just, oh, I was in my glory. I was in my black girl emo 90s rock chick <laughs> glory. I was so happy. I'm so happy. Let's go there. Let's go there. Cause I can't make you love me if you don't You can't make your heart feel something it won't You said the key word, and that's just the vulnerability of this song. Yeah. And his use mm. of vocal dynamics in this song relayed the intention and the feel and the vulnerability of this song. You know, there's a, this song is a conversation. It's a heartbreaking conversation. And at the tops of his phrases, there was such, there was air behind it. It was power. And then by the end, it deflated. And the deflation is not a negative thing. It's almost the way he wanted to communicate the song like an ache. Nini. It felt epic. Yeah. That's the first word I wrote. Like it just felt epic. The staging, the lighting, 
the strings, her look, her voice. That first verse was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then she went into that chorus and it was all full voice. And it was so powerful. It was so powerful. The thing that I love about Nene's voice, along with the flips, along with the vibrato, is the rawness of her voice. Like there is a raw, it's raw. quality yep. to her voice. There's grit, there's power. It felt like she was singing for her life in the best way. It didn't feel desperate, but it just felt passionate. The gears just kept shifting. Like, knowing this song the little bit that I do, I was like, ooh, ooh, I know how this thing, you know, how it can level up. But I, like you said, I also know Jackie. So I was like, yo, she is, she is either going to murder this song or she's going to have to pull back a little bit, right? <laughs> and like, I, I literally wrote a OMG. There was a point right before she went into 11th gear that her <laughs> face was like, it's coming. Like, I got to get ready because it's coming. And I, you really said this, James, but I really, I, I felt the same way. Like, I loved the realness of that moment. Like, it's coming. Let me get ready. Like, I love that. Like, live TV, not. The voice finals, not. She's like, I got to get ready for this note. And she delivered that note and she did like the note came and then there was the note on top of the note. I was like, this woman, like you said it perfectly. There is no ceiling on her voice. And I don't understand, like she is one of the best singers. And now I can say live singers I have ever heard in my life. Okay, Stephanie, tell the Pitchies what they need to hear. So don't forget to follow and subscribe to the Pitchy Podcast on your favorite podcast platform so you can be the first to know when we drop a new episode. Also, check us out on YouTube. Search for The Pitchy Podcast and hit that subscribe button so you know when we drop a new video. And last, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok at The Pitchy Podcast for new episode alerts, episode clips, and so much more. Bye, everyone. Bye.